I'm muting and then I'll be back in five. Good news or bad news first? Yes. Good news? Flamma Cultists versus Flamma Disciples. They're gonna have to prove who is worthy, huh? For sure. I mean, hmm. Wargaming and Pay to Win have always been. They had two teams in the OMC Cup, yes? Um, so they've been in the same position where. Because I wasn't really part of the competitive scene until the OMC Cup. I, I didn't so I don't know if they had the history before that. Yeah, I was the only reason I came back this soon, by the way, was because of that PM from Otto. Uh, mm -hmm. I kind of have my coffee maker under the background, so I'm gonna use another minute so I don't actually blow out the eardrums of everyone by using. Didn't my you get a new one? Yeah, but it's also really loud. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> I, I have an eye for these things. I can I can like see the decibels on them, and I'm like, God, mm -hmm. this is gonna be amazing. So give me another minute. But yep, yeah, no worries. For those that didn't hear in the chat, uh, Nessie is pulling out, so no Nessie versus Omni next. Instead, we're going to be playing the Wargaming Pay to Win versus Wargaming Pay to Win, the two Flumble games. I can show it real fast. We're going to be play this game here: Wargaming Flumble's Disciples versus Flumble's Cultists. This one we're going to be facing instead, because Nessie apparently uh, I think didn't have enough players or something. So it's going to Omni will of course be moving on and then facing the winner of this fight. Anyway, uh, one more minute, I'm gonna go get my cup of coffee, be right back. Right back. Cool. Do you think the room is up? Uh, room is up. Oh, there we go. Joining in. Yes. How the hell are we gonna say put this two apart? We're just gonna call disciples and cultist. Mhm. Mm okay. Which one are cultist? Which one are disciples? I'll be on cultist, and you are gonna be on disciples. Wow. Going for the easy to pronounce words, I knew it. Cultists is harder than disciples for me. How is it harder? I'll write Danish, it makes no sense. I don't have the the token potato in my mouth, so I can't really, you know, talk my, my language properly. Understandable. Mm-hmm. So this is going to be a civil war between uh, the Wargaming Pay-to-Win clan 
indeed. Um, wait, so am I on the Disciples? Yes. Okay, you know you know this is the Disciple team, you're, you're certain, so we don't mess it up? I mean, I told Natal that I would be, uh, I said cultists, and from there on out it's not my fault if things go bad. <laughs> okay, at this point we can blame the organizers, nice, I like that, I like that, I like yeah, that yeah. attitude. As long as we give the sufficient amount of information, and they, they make the decision, then like... I mean, if there was an in-game chat, maybe we could do something about it. But since yeah, but everything the, is handled on TeamSpeak, the, then... The technology of in-game chat, we still yeah. haven't achieved that. So, we, step one, blame blame administrators, adjudicators, whatever you want to call them. Step two, blame technology. Step three, blame Gaben. Ooh. When can we blame uh, WG, then? I don't know. Hmm. See, I, I'm not sure I want to go in on this if there's no blaming them as well. I feel like it's 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 part of any successful stream. So there's gonna be a pair of I think, Uocat is streaming on ch in Chinese. I'm not sure Chinese? if he's streaming on wow. Wow. Twitch or that weird. Oh, that weird site with all the viewbots and inflated numbers. Like every Chinese site is like massively viewbotted or. Like they, they boost their own numbers to make themselves look bigger. It's pretty funk. But um, enough of that. Was that, a, was that a small rant right there? Like well, a one sentence rant? Well, it, it was a bypassing rant. Like, okay. if, if you don't think about it. A drive by it, rant. Yeah, yeah. Like, like if you don't think about it, you'll already forget it. Hmm. Hey, here we go. If I could. Okay. Akisuki, Lo Yang. What am Hello. I I'm sad that I haven't seen a single Otago yet. Mm. Missing your role there, bud? Yep. I refuse to harm anyone of my fellow warrior <laughs> between brothers from the deepest bottom of my loving heart. <laughs> wow, deep. Touching, touching. I feel like that's a lie, though. Yeah, that, okay, that was a lie. Um, yeah, the Loyang has been talked about before in competitive settings. Like, okay. it is, it is basically a Benson, but it's it is basically a, not a Benson. It's worse Benson. Yeah, it, it it trades a lot of stats like uh, torpedoes and things. It trades for the sake of having Hydra. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean. If they if they have a plan for it, I don't mind. It actually I might figure out what their plan already is. They actually have no real hydro ships. They're not running any Bismarck or anything. Mm. And I mean, to be fair, an Akisuki and a Loyang could shut down a cap by themselves. Yeah, I'm assuming they're gonna send a Loyang somewhere where they uh, plan on smoking up, let's say, two battleships and a Kutosov. Where there's basically a lot of stuff in the smoke, and it's very important to have advanced torpedo spotting. Yeah. It would make sense that they would be sending them there. But this map, though, I wouldn't exactly call this a Loyang map. I wouldn't no, even call a, it it's an It's a little Akisuki bit open and big. Map. Yeah, like Akisuki and Loyang are two. I like I I don't mind the picks themselves. Mm. It's just that on this map of all maps, it's uh, surprising. Because both those ships are especially suited for small scale things, and this is like the opposite of small scale. <laughs> yeah. Islands of Ice is massive and open. Yep. Which is, of course, once again, why it's surprising that I see a Bismarck on. Uh, I was on Disciples, yeah, Disciples team. This is a bit weird. Loyang is already running Hydro. There is, like, huh? That Wouldn't the first torpedo, like, show up in, like, a minute? Give or take? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. He's popped it far too early. Maybe if they had a Kagero or something, an early Hydro would make sense. But even still, then you would pop it in, like, 20 seconds or so. Indeed. Well, it might, it, I'm just basing this off the mod that I'm using, so it could be something weird as well. Yeah, but it makes no sense to use it yet. It makes no sense to use it at... Uh... Why would you run Hydra now? 
I mean, this around now is when you can maybe start expecting the torps. Because you gotta consider it's two Bensons against him, so the torps are extremely slow. And yeah. it takes time for time for them to travel. So his I fighter mean, is probably gonna run out by the time the torpedoes actually arrive. Yeah. Or maybe he thought he had defensive AA, 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 and I mean, these are your disciples and your cultists, yeah. so that... Well, it would make sense that my disciples, the one who follow my teachings, do not make mistakes like those fanatics at the cultists do. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Makes sense. Indeed. So, at this point, it's obvious I'm heavily biased for the disciples after that one sentence. Mm. I mean, they're Bias getting... caster, wow. Well, indeed. Wait, wait a minute, they're taking B and... I think they're gonna try to go for AB, which is... Uh, well, actually more BA, which is a surprising route to take. Usually mm. C, usually there's heavy fighting or C, and then you kind of focus on B, because yeah. B is very hard to secure. But somehow, Disciples got B kind of for free. And, well, now they're getting a huge advantage, because, well, they're getting points all the time. Yeah, the, um... Your carrier just traded two fighter squads for no enemy planes shot down. He went into the AA of a Kudus in North Carolina and tried mm -hmm. to fight fighters. There you see the difference though uh, from the game earlier, where a squad sailed past the Kudus of North Carolina and lost almost no planes. Mm -hmm. And here they got folks fired and they pretty much instantly died. So BC, so honestly pretty obvious that the Cyphos is going to get A for free. and. I actually quite like this disciple setup because obviously they're, they're going to cap A, and as mm. I assume they will be setting up at the choke point north of A, or nor yeah. north of B, sorry, and they'll be creating this crossfire to defend B from. But yeah, they could also do the long way around, and we've seen that work in the past. Like um, Omni pulled that off Indeed. in the Winter King, I think it was. Yep, I mean it can work, but it's harder than just setting up a choke point and. Ah, uh, they shouldn't... Okay, they're not gonna give up B. It's harder to pull off, and honestly, it's kind of unnecessary as well, because the reason Omni had to pull that off is because they had to push in, mm. but they don't... Uh, these disciples don't really have to push in anywhere. If they capture A and just hold B, they have a very solid position. Why, why, why push in when you have the lead, when you have the advantage? Just hold your positions and force them to push into you. Yeah. On the flip side of that, though, the, uh, the group from... Uh... Disciples, well, your team, <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> team. yeah, they're about to be cross-fired from C and uh, east of B, if they don't kind of reposition a bit. Disciples actually have a chapa that can almost cover all of B. If they try to cap from uh, the east, they will be outside the radar range, but if they try to cap from the south, they will be within the radar range of the chapa. Oh, uh, look. Looks like Cultist is pushing south of C, though. Yep. That's yep. the danger that I talked about. Like, Disciples just sit there and chill. They're... They might be caught in a crossfire that they themselves yeah. wanted to set up. But the thing is, uh, this island they are near kind of works in their favor. It's very hard to crossfire them yeah. here because, uh, well, you see the huge island on E4. They can yeah, yeah. just put that between them and anyone on the other side and just focus on the guys pushing from the south. Yep. And the Chapaev is going to struggle to get close enough to actually do anything about it because the thing with this island and this position disciples have is that how on earth do you get close enough with a Chapaev undetected to radar that position? There's nothing but open sea in every direction. Hmm. Looks like uh, cultists are gonna get the cap on B. They here, need to reset this Loyang though. They need one hit on him ASAP. And they missed. Miss. They missed. Oh, what? that miss was actually yeah. huge because. Huge. Wow. I think we might see the. F what is this? Oh, Chapai went out of smoke. Surprise. But there's also a. Yeah, that's the radar pop from. Uh... Oh, fuck me, what? The cultists. Yeah, cultists. <laughs> <laughs> They're chopped by him. Oh, Count Mordek is moving forward to dodge the shells from behind, but if he doesn't stop soon, he's gonna glide into the torps coming in from his side. He hasn't noticed them, I think. He has, he's not paying attention. Oh, they ran out. Wow. That was actually quite lucky. Torps coming in from the other side as well. 
you gotta note though that B is contested, so neither so um, cultists are not gaining points from B. So the score is actually a three point difference. One tick separates these teams right now. Yeah. I don't know, I think I would want to see cultists push right here. It feels like they have that West group, or the, the, the group West of B kind of on the back foot right now, so... They... I don't know. Maybe they should try to push from C here. It's uh, risky though. It's the, the problem with pushing from C, the problem you face when you push up from C is not yeah. just that... First you have to constantly keep yourself angled towards uh, the island, but then you also have to angle against the guy north from A, so you kind of have to push in a straight line between the two positions mm -hmm. if you want to push in there. And when you do that, well, you're gonna get cross start from both sides. And uh, when you split up and go into the open like that, the carrier will also start focusing you. So the push is surprisingly difficult, mostly because of how much you have to put yourself at risk to be able to pull it off. Oh, Akisuki gets the dodge. Can't really focus the carrier with the thing that I'm using, which is really annoying. I can put just... Never mind, I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. I'm gonna delete that from the bottom. Yeah. Erase my that part. Yeah, my competence cannot voice, be known. Voice changer, change it to my voice. Oh, yeah. This all will right. all be edited. Extraordinary is eating some damage, but honestly, at this distance, unlikely to achieve much. And mm. B is switching hands again. Like, neither is really gaining an advantage at this point. This is a very passive game and of course the issue is mostly the map. It's very hard to push anywhere because of these yeah. huge open areas. It's one of the reasons why this map is quite disliked in random battles is of course these huge open areas make for very stale games mm -hmm. and this is one of those occasions where it actually transfers to to competitive as well. Huge yeah. open flat seas with no cover is gonna be a passive game. In fact, if no one gets any key picks, more than likely we're gonna see this continue for a couple more minutes. I'd say yeah, and then just three, four minutes, and then suddenly it will start going down, down, down. When the one team who is behind is forced to make a move, and that's when it's gonna start rumbling. And that's that's kind of the amusing part of Islands of Ice is that um, usually this first part is ca kind of universally fairly boring and fairly slow paced, but. Mm -hmm. It cascades the, the, pretty the, fast. The last five minutes are usually pretty damn intense every single time. Yeah. And well, there's just poking damage being done right now. A little bit of HA here. Some citadels. He's giving a little, quite a bit of broadside. No, he's angling now. Yeah, he's angling. He should be fine. B is still being kept. Contested. Contested now, yeah. yeah. The Loyang is in there, doing some advanced scouting. I mean, the HP pools are very even. Count Mordek oh. is... Oh, Count Mordek? Yeah, General Olsen spotted here. Oh... Just gets away. The fact that he survives is so important, because that point swing would have put them so far behind. Yeah. I don't see General Olsen making it out of here alive right now. Chapa is B. eating return fire from the battleships though. He ate a huge chunk and he's still spotted. Is ba Banana bigger? The Chapa is still spotted? Yes. Oh. There they it is. They might trade uh, if they get the volley on the Chapa have now. The battleship is most likely reloading, waiting for the shot. The North Carolina. There comes the shot. There comes the shot. If Will he trade? Oh, no trade. No trade. So that was a huge... That was very risky move, but it paid off big times for the disciples. Uh, the Chapaev stays alive and they score a DD kill. And yeah. because of that DD kill, they will probably also be capturing B. So now the ball is in the cultist court. They have to make the push. They will be forced into action now. Yeah. Eight minutes, 60 points. They need to make it. They need to make something happen now. Pushing into B like this, like we've talked about, it's just incredibly hard. It is hard. In fact, what I would love to see is uh, potentially this this group that's on the flank uh, at F7. What if they went north instead and went for the flank? 
in return, forcing this uh, group at A to move or reposition or whatever. Yeah, they could. Even that would drift. leave the that would leave the uh, the southern group of uh, cultists very exposed, though. So they would have to just hide in smoke and just pray yeah, that they don't get. They have so many members down south. Yeah, it's very hard to push into. But well, they have what five members down south, and they're all pretty healthy. Yep. Oh, really? Blind I didn't shot. expect that to happen. Really, it was. Uh, spotter plane show? Yes. Nice. No, yeah, North Carolina. Yeah, spotter plane. Spotter plane. That's what I like to see. The spotter plane snipe into the smoke. And that's, of course, the risk when you park full broadside in the smoke and shoot. Um, you might see it happen at random times in ranked battles, but here, where people are experienced using it, it's a very common thing, and you always have to be aware. Long range drop into the smoke by the carrier. Not going to hit anything, I think. Nope, no chance of hitting anything with those torps. So the game is actually very, very even because of that trade kill now. Uh, yeah. It's a 20 point game, but B is still in their control. And B being in uh, cultist control is massive. Furious pings coming in on the uh, group west of B here from cultist. The um, group of disciples, that is. Oh, Akisuke is spotted. Akisuke is spotted by a spotter plane. He shoots it down instantly, but the damage is done. He's now... they know that he's pushing up there. How do they deal with him, though? Hmm. It has to be the group north that has to start shooting him. Yeah. Carrier goes for a... drop? Wait, is he gonna potato this? Narrowly. Oh, ho, ho, that was very close. But... He had to slow down, though. Yep. Well, he did get Battleship AP them. missing. It's, it's, Count Mordrek is spotted again. I don't think there was any punish there for him. He was uh, briefly spotted. Oh, yeah, he's he just still playing spotted super north. safe. Meanwhile, while this Akizuki is drawing all their attention and all their focus, they are slowly catching uh, B though. Smoking up here? Oh well, the Chapa is dead. Never Chapa's mind. Chapa is dead. Chapa is yes. dead. Yes. Oh. Bismarck is 5km away. I mean, with thanks to the nerf, that's no longer as suicidal. Hmm. Corp reload consumable being used. Getting another set of four in here. So he needs more angle right. on it though, they're just hiding behind the island. Yeah. B almost got capped, but the Benson charged in at the last moment and stopped the cap. So Ooh, Count Mordrick. Two salvos of uh, Bismarck AP here. Actually, one salvo of North Carolina and one Bismarck. Oh, and he goes. nice. That was Good a shot from... that was probably 19 away when he shot it. Maseru, yeah, he was 19km away when he shot that volley. Uh, the Kutus of X-Men is going for the flank. Now, it's still a 40 point game. And B yeah. has still not switched hands. B is be being contested though. So, if it continues right now, then Cultists will take the win. Because they're contesting B, preventing the point game. Biggest issue Disciples has right now is their battleships are being surrounded slowly, but certainly. But Maseru, doing the push I spoke about earlier, where he has to angle against both sides and has to push straight, he's being torqued. He's being torqued a lot. He already ate some torps, he needed to pop his repair and heal, and I wouldn't be surprised to see another volley of torps going his way very soon. Yeah. That's the biggest issue with doing that push, is that you are exposed. You're in the middle of the open sea with no real cover. Yeah, oh. for sure, and it seems like there's no smoke to him. I don't know what's going on here. Akisuke had to there... smoke himself, so yeah. they only have a Benz... But they do have Benz and Kutus on. Yeah. But I mean, pushing up the Kutus of there is... Where is the Kutus of Whoa, that drop actually looks really good from the carrier. Oh, that was a long-range drop, but I think this drop is going to be pretty good. Multiple uh, hits on the Bismarck. Three. That was more than three. I think he... Four or five torpedo hits because he hit both uh. of them. And he, the biggest thing here is that Stoev might have forced the repair on both of these. So if oh, I hit the North Carolina that I couldn't see. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you couldn't see him. Fair enough. Yeah. No. They forced the repair. And now the Kutuzov, who's been hiding here waiting for his moment, he's got two battleships who have burned their repair. So you can guarantee he's going to be H spamming like mad. And here comes the bomber as well. The bomber will probably get focused down there. The issue is. Uh. Fires a lone die bomber. 
Oh no, Bismarck. No, he's doing an isolate, I think. Being exceptionally... Exceptionally good, exactly. Yep. Tactical yep. beaching. Tactical. I know the strategy. I think invented might, it. I think Benson might bail him out now. The, the grounding wasn't actually the end of the world, because he made sure he was angled against both the battleships. They can't really deal any damage to him right now, because he's angled towards them both. And if the Benson... The Benson smoke will bail him out, I think. Yeah, he's covered. I will say he's pretty damn lucky to not get set on fire from any of the Kutuzov shells, though. Yeah, oh... Laser Drucker up north, um, going... Going down, and more importantly, the SB has switched hand during during all this, so yeah. Cultist is gaining a ton of points here. And we're down to the last two minutes of the match, yeah. and Cultist sitting at 940 points 940. now. First of all, needed to push into B, simply for the sake of contesting it to slow down the points. They are contesting it now, which is good, but they also need to make a, they need a battleship kill, which would be a hundred point swing. On a, capping B and a battleship kill would swing it. Yeah, it's, but it's we're down to the last minute oh, one and a minute, half uh, now. Battleship might not be enough. They don't have enough points to generate the beef. Yeah, it, Cultus needs to fail Cascade at this point. Yeah. If they or, do, Maser, Maser is very much in the open though. He is angled and reversing. He is playing it safe. But all the, these Bismarck secondaries... Oh my lord, what are these torps? Oh, never mind. The carrier is going for another long range torp drop, I think, though. Oh. I think once the Benson popped defensive AA. Yeah, defensive AA, but he's still gonna hit. He gets pretty lucky with the dispersion and gets two hits on Kamikaze Sushi. And that forces him very low. And now, see, Kamikaze Sushi trying to push yeah. is terrible because he's crossfired. Crossfired completely. Every single angle. And his death will end the game. Unless they kill Mars Arrow before. They're actually burning down Mars Arrow really quickly. If they get rid of Mars Arrow, then he can angle much better. This could swing. 20 seconds left. 20 seconds. They need a kill. There's oh, the kill. 885. And it's close. It's very it's close. close. But he's going to die as well. Oh, I think that's it right there. 10 seconds. Can they finish the Chapayev? If they kill Snipe the Chapayev now, the North Carolina does. Or the Kutuzov. Chapayev needs to just hide behind that wall. Oh, they got the kill! There it 881. is! There it is! 800! No, it's not enough! It's not enough! <laughs> it's not what enough! Happened? Nine points short! It was 881 to 892. It wasn't Jeez. enough. They needed, but what? Like, they needed six seconds more of that cap ticking to be able to clinch the win. So cultists actually take the win there. Wow. That, like, like we said, like you said. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... Yeah. Yeah, I said uh, nothing, Chapa, nothing, nothing, they and then a few bang. more seconds. Yeah, yeah, but this this pretty much sums up Islands of Ice. It's yeah. 50 minutes of resident sleeper, and then it's like five minutes of pretty much non-stop action when everyone is forced yeah. to make the moves they don't want to make. But that was very close, very like as close almost as you can get. A few more seconds more, and the points ticking from B would have been enough to push them into the lead. But they didn't have those seconds, so well done nope. the cultist, taking the first map, 1-0. God damn. 15 minutes of resident sleeper, and then what, 5 <laughs> minutes of pog champ? Pretty much. Uh, well <laughs> done to Stoyev though, uh, the, the carrier on uh, cultist. His uh, long-range torpedo drops were very good, not just in forcing yeah. the, the guys out, but he basically he got around the whole AA thing by just doing max range drops and just letting the torps slowly but surely move their way into the smoke. Yeah. In a situation like that, you don't necessarily need the torps to deal the damage. The long-range torpedoes forcing movement because of the damage is enough. Like, I think, didn't he force the Bismarck out of smoke? Yeah, like he forced them, to, not only did he force them to move, but he also forced repairs on them. And of course the biggest issue with battleships is that you can't really uh, move five meters forward quickly and then stop. No, if you see torps going, you have to go full speed to have any chance of dodging. And then when you have dodged, you need to try to slow down. And that takes a long ass time on a battleship because it's got yeah. so much mass. And it's this big, huge, bulky ship. It won't stop on a dime. It will glide and glide and glide and glide. And you'll end up gliding completely out of position. And that's pretty much what's, what he was doing with those torps, was forcing the battleships into positions they didn't want to get into. 
Mm. Good stuff, but Good I mean, stuff, I mean, Islands of Ice is snooze fest. It is if, snooze fest. If the teams are very, very close in skill level. Yeah, exactly. And these I mean, were. If two, usually the better the teams are, the thing is, the better the teams are, the less, less unforced errors there will be. And when mm. there are unforced errors, it, the first 15 minutes is basically the slow tactical positioning, uh, jockeying around for an advantage, neither team really getting it. One team occasionally getting an advantage thanks to some plane spotting, and then uh, the other planes return and force them back, and then they get the slight advantage. You could see B switching hands a couple of times there. Mostly yeah. thanks to plane control. Plane spotting DD, forcing them out, and then the friendly planes come in and it switches side. But ultimately there was no real like power shift. But then when the kill starts happening, that's when it like explodes. The game really gets forced into action. We're waiting on map number two. Oh yeah, we went into... We're in round two now, which means yeah. Warrior's Path. Ooh. Ooh. Which is a new addition to any competitive stuff that I've done. So that's I, I don't know if I've cast it as well. Can't believe that as soon as I said, uh, but what if they kill the Chapayev? They instantly shoot and focus on the Chapayev and he dies. <laughs> but it wasn't enough, not enough points. No. And for, for those of. Uh, there's a lot of people watching. For people that are surprised of how passive the games are, basically competitive World of Warships doesn't work like the warships that you play in random battles. It's um, you gain a small advantage and you hold on to that and you don't risk anything, pretty much. If you have the advantage, you hold on to that. Yeah, and like... if you can further your lead a little bit more without taking too many risks, you can do that. Yeah. It's a... Uh, it's very, very, very much a slow-paced kind of play. And yeah, the difference between random battles and competitive is that in random battles you play for your score. In competitive you play for the win, and only yeah. the win. Nothing else matters. If your DD does zero damage, shoots, doesn't shoot once, doesn't kill anyone, but he's point on with smokes and it helps his team win the game, and he's point on with the spotting, that's all you want. No, yeah. he won't get, in a random battle he wouldn't get any XP for this, it wouldn't reward him with almost any XP smoking up his teammates and spotting, but in a competitive game, it would win the game, and that is all that matters in competitive games. Yeah. And um, a lot of these things that are very team play oriented aren't really rewarded properly, pro properly in random battles, so that's why you often see very different types of games in competitive. Yeah, and kind of as a uh, the the last game that we did between Hawks and GW. S D? What was it? Yeah. Anyway, when we called out the inexperience of those teams, like, I don't know, a Chapayev advancing under fire, you would you would not see um highly experienced team do, do that because they know that if they lose 10k off that Chapayev early game, that's 10k health that it won't have late game. So it's like it's very much a a a snowballing effect if you want to call it that. Like gain it a small advantage and try to just propagate that to be bigger. My, my chat actually pointed out something really interesting. If that first volley on the, on the Loyang had managed to reset the cap, they would have won. That one volley I called out that missed the Loyang and didn't reset the, yeah. the B cap. If that would have hit, they would have gained those points required to win the game. So those are the margins a game can come down to. Yeah. And that's why you always try to save every health point you can. And you yeah. try to like you play super uh, super conservatively with any resource you have, be it health, consumables, or planes for the carrier, like or capture points. Yeah, exactly. Like Get a few, like be... ten points in a random battle means nothing. Ten points in a competitive game can be the lead you need to force the enemy team into pushing, and that can be game deciding. For sure. All right, the next room is up. Roger. Well, uh, already in there. Gonna get something to drink. I'm in the queue. BRB. Yeah.
Bak. Let's see, are we seeing anything new here? No more Lo Yang. Interesting. They really picked the Lo Yang just for that move? Oh, Otago! Oh, Idek. I'm rooting for you. <laughs> they probably heard you last game. Exactly. Akisuki. Warrior's Path, though. I don't think I've ever casted Warrior's Path in competitive. I have never seen the game on Warrior's Path competitive. Yeah, I'm thinking if I've ever seen I'm pretty sure it's a no. Mm. It's a strange map for competitive though, isn't it? Or I mean, like C is, it's kind of, honestly, it's like someone took Islands of Ice, added more cover, and turned it on its side. That's exactly how I would describe it. And, uh, uh, Rip, I actually did not crash. It told me that I crashed, oh. but then he lied to me and I didn't crash, so unrip. Okay, good job. Quick See, rip, just to like, you know. Yeah, just to give us, give us a scare. Yep. Anyway, what I was saying is, some it's like someone took Islands of Ice and imagine C is A on Islands of Ice yeah. and kind of kind of dropped it on its side and then added some cover. So C is obviously going to be the double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. uh, the more resources you send there, the more likely you, likely you are to cap it. But the more resources you are sending away from what will most likely be the main battle at B or A. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. most of these maps ends up being a fight over B. Um, pretty much all of them, right? Because it's the central point and that's just the way it goes. Indeed. A lot of pings on B and A. Makes sense, of course. A lot uh, of pings from us on north side of A, for some reason. North side of A. Mm -hmm. I assume Chapa position. Behind that island over there? Like, where would you... You would go... Didn't you say north of A? Oh, it depends. Yeah, how northwest north. of A. Like northwest uh, of A. Charlie two three was ping. Charlie two three. That is, that is so far away though. Maybe they could be sending a battleship down there to like. Well, and your friend, the Otago. Ah, yeah, Otago flankers. Of course, they have an Otago now, which means they have more mobility. They can do more flanking, annoying things. So they are sending one Benson to C. They are actually they are skipping A completely it seems. No, they are dropping a smoke on G4. So I assume at least the Bismarck will position there, possibly the Kutuzov, maybe even North Carolina. So they're going to put up a high they're going to fortify that island south of A heavily and I assume they will be pushing to capture B and C. And uh, their plan is to basically cut the map in half and hold BC. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, cultists are... I don't know. Got half, well, a third of their dudes between B and C right now. Snaking... Oh, that's the Chapa I'm sitting uh, by those island. That's actually a good positioning for that this That is a very Chapa. good position. If he gets close enough to the island, he can raid our both B and C at the same time. Yeah. Which is pretty brutal. But I don't... Have they, are they sending anything to C? Mm, not really. They had a DD there probing, but he do dropped Torps and then turned away. Roger. So... Disciples are gonna get the C cap for free. And the B is also being capped. Is it contested? They, the Chapa was briefly spotted, which was, I feel, a mistake from Cultist, because uh, as soon as a Chapa is spotted, uh, it's easy, it's significantly easier to play yeah. around it. But he is using know, his whoa! radar right now. Stoev dropping into the smoke actually lands one hit on the Benson. Oh, he needs to accelerate, accelerate. He's in, he's not repairing his engine! He's not repairing, he doesn't realize his engine is broken! No! Where is this? Oh, no. yeah, 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 on, on C. Oh, wow. Nice. That was, that was, I don't know, I think, I think what might have happened is that Stoev hit the bomb earlier, which forced him to repair. Uh. And then his second torp, when he dropped, broke the engine on this Benson. And either the Benson didn't notice his engine was broken, 
or his repair was on cooldown, but he was unable to repair the engine to get out of the way of the incoming torps. So he kind of, even with last stand, the acceleration is so heavily hit by that broken engine mm -hmm. that he could only limp away and slowly eat it. <laughs> that's. I think that's the worst feeling in this game, when you see torpedoes, but there's nothing you can do. Yeah. And that puts, puts a huge spoke in uh, their plans, because, yeah. well, they did get A, which is good, but being down a DD is... Massive. Massive loss early on. Then again, they do have... Uh, they're running a 3 DD comp, Yeah. so not the end of the world. But the utility of the Benson losing that that early. Indeed. Now, and both Bensons from uh, Cultists in A right now. You mean again? Sure. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I was I like, wait alphabet. a minute! Wait Hold a minute. on! <laughs> Hold on. Like, is your game in front of mine or what's going on? Defensive AA popped by General Olsen in the Benson there to help out his fighters. Roger. Uh, Banan Bieger is very close with the radar. I assume he already used it. And I don't think they got any value out of it. They, w they weren't able to reset the cap. They didn't really get anything. Now is the question, is Cultist going to try to further their lead by swinging around one Benson's and trying to, to cap out C from the north? Yeah, I mean, C would be such an easy cap for them now. <clears throat> because they can kind of spare the ship, because they have the additional ship. Yeah. And the only thing they need to defend right now is B. And uh, I don't feel disciples are in a position to push B at all yet. No, cultists have a good cross set up as well. They have the North Carolina Kudosov on the northwest side of B by that island, and then they have another North Carolina in amongst the islands north east of B. It's like, how do you how do you take that? I mean, you could do it by just slamming yourself into the south end of the oh. islands. Wildek eats or Idek eats a torp in the Otago and oh. some AP afterwards. But looks like he used defensive AA to bail himself out, so not the end of the world. Looks like um, cultists are going to do a little bit of a poke with the uh, North Carolina and the Otago by by A, actually. I don't know if that's the right way to do things. They have no smoke available for them. Disciples are slowly advancing their smoke further north at uh, south of A, but like... It's very slow advancing. Oh, actually, this is interesting. The disciples did send an Akizuki to sea, so they Ooh. are willing to. They really want that sea cap. I think it's such an integral part of their plans on how they want to play this map. But the problem is the carrier is obviously going to go for him now. He is an Akizuki and he does have a fighter to help, but yep. you can bet Stoib is going to tie up his fighter with his own fighter and then he's going to go for the strike. So, and he has a Benson, seven kilometers away from him, on the north side yeah. of the, the Charlie Cap. He goes for the strafe, Storm dodges it, so now it's up to that. And here's defensive AA from the bit. Benson. Yeah, and now he needs to torpedo a bit. He needs to torpedo a bit, big time. I would turn into the planes, but he's turning away. Risky, can pay off. Oh no, but Akizuki turning circle oh, is so bad. Oh yeah, mm. Should have turned into them. This is pain too. Yep. Yeah, that's enough. Oh, some decent there, but yeah, yeah. two torps. Like, the idea of turning away, the, the, when, you, when you are you're turning away or turning into torps, the idea behind, between, behind turning away from torps is that you force the planes to make this large circle to get your broadside, and that means they have to spend more time in your anterior. In return, though, you put yourself at a much higher risk to hit the torps to your broadside. Turning into the torps, well, he gets to drop much sooner, since he closes the distance with you much sooner. But on the other hand, you have an easier time uh, dodging the torps. You might eat one, uh, like higher chance of maybe eating one torp if you turn into them. Yeah. But you won't get deleted. And he went. He basically went for the greedy play of turning away and trying to kill the, the torpedo bombers off completely. And that really backfired. That really backfired. Because now they're down to one DD. Yeah. Schläfer or Schlafer. I don't know how you pronounce that, but playing a dangerous game here with uh, North Carolina AP. Yep. Oh, oh, there you go. That's half there a you go. <laughs> <laughs> Dangerous game in dead. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Yeah. Torps coming in though, but I think they've been spotted by... Yeah, there's no risk there. Uh, meanwhile, 
no news on Bravo. It's just Bravo things. Um, I don't know. Cultists much... poking, still poking with that Otago on the Alpha side of things. Yeah, I don't really know how I feel about these disciples feeding DDS one at a time uh, at sea. Because Stoev is obviously looking out for it, and every time it happens, he sends his bombers there. And he's been an uh, integral part of both of the DD kills they've gotten early. I mean, if you're gonna do that, at least have the Shokaku fighter planes ready, both of them there ready to defend, if you're gonna go for that play. Don't just leave them there alone and with like kind of one fighter and hope for the best. That's yeah. Hoping for the best is not a consistent tactic. Sometimes yeah. it'll work, sometimes it'll backfire heavily like it has here. It's a bit of a greedy. It's a bit of a greedy call to peel away yeah. one DD to do the job of what should be a wing of like two or three ships. Indeed. Like, because again, we talked about this in between the matches. It's like small advantages and risk versus reward overall. It's like exactly, basically, uh, the cultists are taking playing this game. Um, they're take, moving an inch at a time, always gaining a small but consistent advantage. Mm -hmm. Whereas disciples are taking leaps at a time and every now and then they will trip and they will fall down and bloody their nose and then they take the next leap and well it works at times but this game they've been tripping constantly and yeah. two DDs dead to no enemy kills is a pretty terrible decision uh, position to be in. Yeah. Cultists have to work out or watch out though because they have a two cap against them. So if they keep playing passively, they're gonna be in the same position as disciples were in the last game, where they have to do something. Um, yeah, but it's a lot of points they need to make up, because uh, they they only have, they have one cap advantage. I mean, yeah. yes, it generates points, but it's still gonna take some time before it actually becomes an impact, and the cultists have plenty of time to react to this. Disciples pushing into B now from the east. The North Carolina and the Chapai trailing, I would assume. Yeah, they are contesting Bina. And I mean, Chapai North Carolina versus what will most likely be the entire enemy force. I don't see them getting past this gap. The issue is uh, pushing from C to B when the enemy is holding positions like your team is means they have to pass this gap of open C. And that's not going to be easy. Here comes the carrier, against the Chapa though, he's probably going to drop from range. No defensive AA from the Chapa! What? Hmm. Really? Where was Banan Bigger's defensive AA? Yeah, because he didn't... Uh, maybe he burned it early to save the Akisuki. No, it... no, he wasn't close. No, he, he didn't shoot. The, those planes were in panic at all. I don't there know what is... he... Other bad news coming towards the chopper. He needs to go full speed right now. Yeah, but still, that no, no, that's just massive. No, no, I can't believe uh, that didn't happen. Yeah, but it, it's either on cooldown, right, or he's not using defensive AA. Yeah, but bringing a chopper with no defensive AA, uh, what? We saw that earlier with uh, a chopper that was working radar and hydro. Yeah, but that's that's kind of stuff you run in ranked because yeah. no, not enough carrier players. In competitive, there's always, and especially Stoev has already proven that he likes running the 2-2-2 setup, since mm. he's obviously getting value out of the 2-2-2 setup. So, just very surprising that he's not running it. Surprising oh. lack of punish on that low, low North Carolina and Chapa yeah. here. So that's what I'm thinking, especially since uh, two torps, they probably forced his repair. I would expect them to try to punish it harder, but then again, the ER, once again, they're going for the inch advantage I spoke of earlier. Yeah. Uh, Chapaev is going for the C cap. He can cap it from cover, pretty much, without being shot at. Now radaring, uh, the Chapaev, uh, Garanthor in the Chapaev of uh, Cultus radaring. And... Uh... There will be no follow-up on that radar, it seems. Yeah, but uh, still, see, once again, I would have liked to go for a heavier punish in the North Carolina, but cultists are playing slow, methodical. They are not going to take any risks. What's the safest play they can do? Send one ship to cap the uncontested sea for free. Yeah. That's the safest play, and it's smart play. It doesn't yield the big rewards, but it also doesn't have any real risks behind it. Yeah, we've been very focusing on the east side. On the west side of the map by A, Disciples have moved up quite a bit. 
Yeah, they've been doing this the entire time, creeping up with smokes. They got uh, the Kutuzov and the Benson, uh, like, smoking alternatively, constantly moving the smoke up. I think they want to dislodge them from this position, and Extraordinary is actually extremely low in his uh, North Carolina. In fact, Kamikaze Sushi might be able to finish him. If he can arc the shells over the mountain, no, I think he's in cover. He just got behind cover. And getting smoked up. Schlafer is spotted. Hmm. Kotoso being shot from by the North Carolina. Oh, just a close miss. The game is... Whoa! Whoa! He was full Jeez. HP! He was full HP! I just looked Where? at him! Where? Oh, Nobex from 10-ish away. Yeah, he was. He gave broadside to Nobex. It, yeah. I'm looking, looking at this point of view now, this is like a free broadside from Akuto, so what the hell was he thinking? But that actually gives them the lead. I yep. mean, they've been two ships down, but that one kill just gives them the lead. The problem is the Chapaev is being spammed from C, and if he moves forward, he's gonna get shot by the North Carolina. And he's burning. Yeah. He does mm. repair, but like <laughs> he's he's living on the edge, literally, yep. literally right now. Needs more duct tape. North Carolina reverses to be able to shoot Garanthor. Gets a nice chunk on him, but no Citadel. But he's forcing the Chapa away with that move. But now Beager has to be yeah. careful of Mars right now. Yeah, so now he's, like you said, he's being forced to revert. Oh, oh, oh overpens, overpens. Oh, overpens oh, to me later. He dropped the torps as he fled. Are they spotted? No. But he has to, Masaru has to, uh, Masero even, has to be anticipated, yeah. Yeah, he's turning them. He's turning to dodge them. There oh. he goes. One versus one, battleship. Uh, Masero shouldn't go for this. Uh, Masero should stop and bail. Yeah. Because there is no value here. There's no value in this. Yeah. I mean, he can win this fight probably easily, but they Benson here and another long range drop from Stoyle. Yeah. And it's gonna catch him. That could be the flood. I'm not sure. No flood. He took it on the And belt. the. The Omar show in the Benson for the Oh, he just thing. shot the North Carolina and now he pops around the corner. Wait, why did he shoot the North Carolina? I knew he was here. I think he wanted to delete Extraordinary and then ram at Maasero. That was his uh, plan. Yeah. That, was, that was actually a pretty smart plan because... Yeah, this is what I meant. Maasero shouldn't have gone here. Yeah. He's, he's trading full HP. Oh, well, 40k HP versus 17k. Yeah, 40k might as well be full HP and competitive though. Yeah, but I mean... they. Cultists have such a massive lead that the trade isn't a big deal. They have so many ship leads that trading e trading even unevenly is still in their favor. But it was kind of unnecessary. Yeah. Extraordinary went down as well. And um, still even. Well, not really, but... Not really. Uh, the thing is how they can no longer contest B at all. No. But someone in chat actually pointed out something pretty funny. Their name is Wargaming Pay to Win, but there's there's actually only three premium ships in this game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have to say overall, though, uh, the biggest I think uh, difference I've seen between these two teams has been the quality of the carrier play. Stoyle mm. has had a pretty huge impact on this game, and I don't know, it's possible Admiral Kuwert has had one, and I just missed it, but I haven't really seen him make any similar plays. Then again, credit where credit's due, uh, cultists have been playing much more together, safer, um, combined, basically forming AA blobs and not really giving uh, Admiral Kuwert any chances. Whereas Disciples, on the other hand, sent their DDs one at a time to see it to be formed by the carrier, so... Gotta keep that in mind as well.
Alright, as this game is rounding out, I'm gonna try to figure out where we're heading next. Looks like they want to do a third map shenanigans. But I don't know if we want to... If there's anything more interesting going on, then we should probably do that instead. Yeah, but actually, well, let's finish this one first, and then we can check. Then we can check. Kutuzov making a brave play for B, but yeah. Atago scores a kill. I love it. <laughs> Atago capping as well. Atago confirmed viable. More Atago in teams, please. Yeah. Early Torps, though, by uh, the Benson of Cultist catching the uh, Benson of the Disciples. Yeah, but uh, those, those would never have hit. It's just that he happened to have broken engine. Yeah. The one Torp that hit him broke his engine, and he did I don't know if... I, it, I would be interested in knowing if he actually had repair and didn't notice it, or if his repair had been forced on cooldown. Yeah. Alright. Admiral Quirt, carry! Clutch or kick? Quirk carry? <laughs> Admiral Quirt carry. Yeah. Quirt. <laughs> Quirt. What? Where did you get the carry from? Or carrier? Yeah. Admiral Quirt carry or kick. Ah, okay. Jesus. Do you even ears, bro? No, clearly not. <laughs> Alright. I mean. Well, ultimately, they were fair. I mean, points wise, fairly evenly matched. But ultimately, it felt like uh, the cultists' more methodical approach to the game yeah. ultimately gave them more consistent results than disciples. Like very, very gamblish, brave, uh, reckless style, I might even call it. And uh, when you play against experienced teams, the reckless style isn't consistent, and that's really the biggest issue. And it might win your tournament or a few games, but yeah, mm, ALN coming not in mind? the long run. ALN coming to mind. I mean, ALN played very reckless games. They won one tournament, and then in the first, what, Kings Kings of the Sea, they got knocked out in the very first uh, very first game, I think. They got knocked out. Mm. And they've kind of been missing in action ever since. So It's risky, it can be rewarding, but it doesn't build consistency. Yep. Alright, so... Let me figure out what to do. And we'll... We have at 1900 CET Tora 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 versus uh, what was this? DR. Come on, where is it? Derin Kabus. And we have MDiv1 was MDiv1 versus UFR. Sounds like a good one. Or Clira versus OM. Clira? Clear. Wait, let me trying... refresh. Let me let let me open this thing up. Good. I'm looking at the schedule right now. So. Yeah, I'm looking at the... So Omni versus the team we just saw could be like very good, right? I think this would be a very good game. I mean, for round three. Yep. 